Hey, Stevie Nani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with the story of the Ford Supervan. Now, we covered this a little bit, oh, about a week ago, but this is something kind of unusual. When you say Supervan with a first-generation Ford Econoline like this 1965, you're talking about this add-on 18-inch long caboose that was added to the otherwise 90-inch wheelbase standard Ford Econoline van. Now, the Supervan, when you see windows, was generally made for people, and Ford called it the station bus. And this is kind of cool because if we really study this, we'll see right here where it's simply the standard Ford Econoline van with this add on section. In fact, in the back of it, we can kind of see the surgery um, locations where there's a seam here behind that stamping where this 18 inch add on joins it right there pinch welds all the way around. Now the roof stamping was longer, it wasn't adapted. They actually, Ford came up with a one piece, massively long roof stamping for the Supervan. But again, the rear quarter panels were add-ons. Outside, we can see here the seam. So these, again, have a decidedly bustle back look to them. And here's the seam on the outside that identifies the 18 inch addition to the Supervan. And again, this one here with the yellow paint and the windows was undoubtedly a school bus. And getting back to that yellow paint, we can see that it's been in here since day one. Uh, the roof is all yellow. And this must have been pretty striking when it was new, um, taking kids to and from school. But something also kind of cool about the station bus is the fully finished interior. You can see remnants of it here. This was somebody's work van at some point. But before that, this fiberglass panel right here was what allowed this to be more civilized inside. And that stuff right there is just about impossible to find if you're looking for it today. But again, this is not found in a cargo van, but only on the station bus as a people hauling machine. Uh, let's go around here to the front of it. This would have had a Ford 9-inch rear axle, uh, the extended wheelbase. The standard 90-inch Econolines could have had the small 6.5-inch uh, ring gear falcon axle, believe it or not, but the nine inches typically found on these things. There's the heavy duty leaf springs right here. We can see there's one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight leaves on that. Again, uh, this was a 10 passenger bus, this one here with three rows of seats. So these springs would have supported that extra weight. Now these were unit construction, no separate frame. So these are fairly light vehicles, to be honest. The third generation of Conaline from 75 up was body on frame, basically an F-series pickup with a van body, much stronger. But again, these were meant to be light and uh, economical. And here we have right here, Consumer Reports magazine. This is July of 66. I was two years old when this magazine came out, but the family bus wagons. Huh, you gotta remember station wagons were a big deal, but if you wanted something even bigger than that, you got yourself a bus wagon. And here it is, the Ford Econoline on the left, the club wagon and in the middle, the Chevrolet sport van. On the right, the Dodge Sportsman. And the words here say here, the first time you clamber up into the front seat of one of these family bus wagons, grasp the almost horizontal steering wheel and peer from your majestic height to the panoramic windshield, you may feel like the driver of a Greyhound bus. And if you glance back, it may seem at first to be as long and curvaceous as a big bus too. If these words sound familiar, the SUV phenomena of the 1990s, people talked about command seating position. Well, that was also the way these station buses and family buses were seen. And it says here, apparently the Falcon Club Wagon still manages with its, with its second and third seats to remove to provide about 43% more usable cargo space than the largest conventional station wagon. So again, these were dual purpose vehicles. Now here's the thing, here's the picture showing this one here with the seats inside. This one's not a super van, does not have the extra tail on it. But next page, apparently Ford was good and Consumer Reports, the kiss of death, was being found not acceptable, like Chevrolet and Dodge. Meanwhile, they gave the Ford uh, Falcon Custom an acceptable rating. The problems they had with the uh, Chevy and the Dodge apparently had to do with very poor rear ride. Uh, handling was poor, uh, braking distribution, fade, resistance, fair. So they weren't really happy, but the Ford Club Wagon got high grades. In fact, acceptable, which is pretty cool. Now inside of these, don't ever expect to find a V8. These were strictly six cylinder, but there were three possibilities. Now the basic Econoline work machine could be had with a 144 cubic inch Falcon 6 popper, which is a microscopic little engine. But when it comes down to the passenger vehicles, Ford knew there'd be more weight, so they, you couldn't get the 144. It was either the 170 or the 240, which we have right here. Now, how do we know this is a 240. Well, the 144 and the 170, the intake manifold is integrally cast with the head. Meanwhile, the 240, the intake manifold is a separate piece, much more efficient, better for breathing. So this is definitely the 240 big engine 
in this particular uh, school bus van. Now this thing here, the whole front has been sliced away, but we can see remnants of the front leaf springs right here, uh, the beam axle up front. And if we come around to the side here, we'll see that uh, it has a front sway bar, big 11 inch drum brakes. And again, a little step, an extending step right down here that used to allow the kids to get in and out a little bit easier right there. And here's remnants of the original, look at this, sort of a tartan plaid rubber floor mat right there, remains of it. So when this was new, it was probably a pretty striking little vehicle, probably part of a fleet of maybe five or six. A lot of schools would buy a couple of these, not just the one. And almost certainly this was not purchased by a, a family looking to haul the kids. This is almost certainly an industrial piece for a school. Again, this yellow paint on this thing is probably special order. I did look for a, uh, a serial number or a tag with uh, specifications it's gone but it would have certainly shown industrial paint or special paint code on this but again this one here has the, the pull out doors uh, no sliding doors in Ford Land until 1972 so they were kind of behind the game on that whereas Volkswagen microbuses had sliding doors uh, around this same time here but not Ford so again this was a, an old school bus that brought kids to school and now it's at Berniston Auto Wrecking now teaching us about the history of of the Ford Supervan and how 18 inches of extra tail allowed these things to haul as many as 10 people. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel and stick around tomorrow. We'll be back with more Junkyard Crawl.